Joining us on the show is Paul from Scott Country, and he's going to be telling us about the new Guide IR518EC Thermal Imager. It's a phenomenal bit of kit. Paul, this looks like the bee's knees. Yep, this is the new Guide 518EC. Um, it's an improvement over the old 518C model. Um, it's got various different improvements, including uh, a higher resolution, now 640 by 480, um, a detection range of up to 1200 meters at night, which is a phenomenal distance. And it'll pick up small animals such as um, rabbits, um, badgers, foxes at that distance, not just larger animals also. 1200 meters at night time or, or in the day or in any conditions, you know, we've discussed before uh, how foliage uh, and grass gets in the way. How does this stand out against, say, other thermal images that just have a black and a white heat signature, for example? It's not just a black and white heat signature. Um, this does have a nine display mode where you can actually have different colours of detection. It does look a bit James Bond-esque. However, um, it does have a, a big difference in terms of what you're looking at. Um, switching to red hot modes, for example, you can see red hot sources and track red hot sources, the hottest source on the on the scene. Um, you also have a 50 hertz refresh rate. Most thermal images have a 9 hertz refresh rate, which gets a bit laggy if you're particularly if you're panning across a fast moving animal. Um, some other thermal images have 30 hertz refresh, but this is a 50 hertz thermal imager. And that's an important thing to remember because with thermal images, there's, there's nothing worse than getting this distortion. If you're watching, for example, a roe deer or a red deer making its way across a field and it suddenly bolts, with the lower hertz models, you are going to get that distortion. So in some ways, this model eliminates that, doesn't it? And it just makes the viewing experience that much more sharper. Absolutely. Um, there's virtually no lag. If you're panning across a field, if you're watching a fox running across a field um, with a 9 hertz stable imager, it'll be very stuttery, if you want to use that term, or very laggy. Um, with the guide IR518EC, you get a crisp, sharp image, um, and you can film at that as well. Paul, what kind of people would use that product in the field? Um, there's various applications from security and surveillance. Uh, you can use it for, for hunting um, in terms of vermin control, spotting where vermin are. People can use it for wildlife research, um, badger surveys. Um, some game estates will do a survey on what deer are, are in a plantation at night. You, they can count deer a lot easier with a thermal imager. Um, very, lots of different applications. And that's an important thing to remember, folks, with thermal images because it's not just security and surveillance uh, from a, a human or a building's environment point of view. To watch wildlife and, and track them, for example, if you're going to watch badgers at night foraging and, and taking things into their den, I suppose you can go out in any condition. Um, none of the weather conditions affect this, this unit, do they? Nope, thermal images aren't impeded by things like grass, foliage, rain, snow or fog or mist. Um, you can scan a field with a traditional night vision device such as the Archer and not see anything. Um, you can turn on the thermal imager as we, as we did when we were testing the kit in the field and you can see three badgers in dense scrub that we didn't even know were there. They were 30 metres in front of us, we, we didn't even know they were there. Fantastic and, and I guess as well, some people will say you don't need all the features on it well, actually, you do. Is that right? Because, it, again, it's personal preference, but to be able to pick certain targets out, you need the features, don't you? You need the different features. I'm actually a bit of a convert. Um, my favourite thermal imager was the Pulsar HD38 Quantum. Um, you had black hot or white hot. I did think the different colour display modes were, um, yeah, they were a nice feature to have, but you didn't really need to know which part of the animal was hottest. However, um, in the field, in practice, when you're looking for something a long, long way away, a white hot or a black hot, because it, particularly using it shortly after sunrise or sunset, um, stones, dry stone dikes, different parts of foliage have different heat signatures and it's difficult to tell them apart. Put the colour modes on here and you can spot a red heat source from you know, up to 1200 metres away. We're joined on the Night Vision Show by journalist Mike Powell. Mike, you've been using the Guides IR518EC for the last few weeks. Um, give me your opinion on this handheld thermal imager. Uh, yes, I was very impressed with it. Um, it did everything you wanted it to do, um, and probably much more than you really needed it to do. Most shooters really want um, a night vision implement, be it a pure night vision or thermal, that will show them what's out there, 
and enable them to come to terms with it. The guy did this absolutely perfectly, but there were a lot of facilities on it that, quite honestly, I probably felt I wouldn't normally use. For, for people in the field, people using it for hunting, surveillance and observation, it's obviously got the, the, the colour features. How did you get on with, um, say, switching from using something like the Pulsar HD38, which is the black and white heat signatures, to the colour ones with the guide? Um, the colour facility on the guide was interesting, um, but I would say that's as far as it went where I was concerned. I think if I had a lot of money and I was able to just want to go out and look at things, then I think the guide would be absolutely perfect. Fantastic. Uh, Mike Powell, thank you for joining us on the Night Vision Show. We will be speaking to you again in further episodes. and Thank you very much indeed. We took the guide into the field, uh, into the hills, in fact, in Scotland for a field test. Uh, and you're going to see some of the footage coming up with that. It, it really is a phenomenal bit of kit. Paul, give us your views and your experience. It, it, was, a, it was an interesting evening, wasn't it? It was, absolutely. Um, we went out with Wildlife Stu. Um, we wanted to film some badgers. We left Stuart's house and literally within two minutes of walking, I spotted a heat source in the bushes. Um, Stuart wasn't aware there was a badger set there. Um, we tracked along the hedge line and we found there was actually three badgers moving around, taking, uh, bedding back into their beds. And, and that was that was a great thing to see, folks, because animals at night time get spooked quite easily. With this, we were able to pick them up immediately. Um, we did have other night vision kits with us, but uh, the guide just pinpointed so that we could observe it straight away. Uh, and we were able to zoom in as well, weren't we? Yeah, it has a digital zoom facility mm. where you can you can zoom in on what you're looking at. Um, it means you can see detail, and also if you're scanning a larger area, it's easier just to have a you know pinpoint a particular area. Um, one thing we did find um, with the color modes, we were able to find heat sources that we couldn't see with the standard Pulsar Quantum. Mm. Um, whether it was just the distinguishing between the black heat and you know stones and other objects, this just seemed to pick out objects from much further away than I would anticipate. And we were also able to see into the trees, weren't we? Into the bushes and we could, I mean, we, we saw the badgers go up a bank of trees. Now, you wouldn't see that with normal night vision. That was that was pretty special, wasn't yeah, it? Well, we, we had the archer with us, um, with the, the archer laser that it comes with. And um, even seeing the badgers 40 metres away in the, in the short grass and, and scrub with the archer, it was hard to pick out. You really needed the thermal to identify. Hence mm. why it's so popular, particularly with hunters, to have a thermal imager to spot wildlife and then you have your traditional night vision um, to view it or uh, indeed using a, a, a... And that's an important point folks. We were also able to see the badgers moving up through the trees weren't we? Other night vision devices can't see that. No, nope, we had the Starlight Archer with us and um, we were just using that with a new attachment which we'll cover later but um, the thermal you could see heat sources moving about in the gorse and the scrub whereas with Archer we, we would never have known it was there. A lot of people use thermal imagers for that purpose, use them for detection and, and, and spotting an actual heat sources mm. there and then using the traditional night vision device. And, and, and one thing to remember, when, when you're talking about thermal images and night vision, you hear people talk about Gen 3 Plus, uh, Super Duper, all these different things. We compared the guide against a Gen 3 Plus image intensifier with the Starlight Archer and, and the Starlight Archer could not pick up the badges. And, and that was a good field test for us, wasn't it? Because it just shows that with this technology, you get better results in, in those specific conditions. Well, intrinsically, thermal imaging and, and traditional night vision are very different. Um, a thermal imager is he seeing a heat source, an infrared heat source. Mm -hmm. So whether you're looking at a badger, a fox, a, a roof of a house, a vehicle, you'll see a heat signature coming from it. Whereas with night vision, there's no heat signature. You're just seeing infrared to view at night. So the human eye is much more um, susceptible to seeing heat sources. Um, at further distances with this, you wouldn't see with a, night a normal night vision device at all. And uh, an interesting and exciting part of the evening was when we picked up a, a rather large object, uh, some distance away, I might add. Yeah. Yep, um, we're still a little bit puzzled. We're hoping um, local wildlife ranger Keith Kirk will scrutinise the footage for us. We um, picked something up, probably about 400 metres away. Stuart was using it at the time, and it actually jumped a dry stone wall. 
and then started moving up a field. It was larger than a badger. Um, personally, I think it was a large badger. We're not 100% sure yet, but I'm hoping Keith will, will identify that and we'll, we'll let you know a bit about that in the next show. And, and, and that's all part of doing the field test, folks. And again, observation and surveillance, we were able to pick up that object moving at some speed, I might add, and it did jump uh, quite a high object. So you know, obviously it's a process of elimination for us, but with this, we were able to see it. Brilliant bit of kit, and that's the, uh, the Guide IR 518EC.